Hello everyone and welcome to Tyreek on the Move. Now here's the host of Tyreek on the Move, Mr. Tyreek Wynn. What's up everybody and welcome to Tyreek on the Move. I am your host Tyreek Wynn and yes, we have another great one for you. And we're changing up the flow. We've made an executive decision with the Tyreek on the Move staff and I to change up the flow of the show just a tad bit. So this is going to be beneficial to you because you're going to get to see more and you're going to get to know a little more about what's going on and what's happening. So now we're going to get into the first segment, What's Sizzling? And this week on What's Sizzling? Tyler Perry Studios, man, I tell you, Mr. Perry, talk about one of the most expire, inspiring people right here in the world, man. Ugh, just awesome. He had his grand opening right here in Atlanta at Tyler Perry Studios. And wow, take a look at these B-roll shots. Wow, take a look at all those people there. We got Whoopi Goldberg, uh, Halle Berry, Samuel L. Jackson, uh, Beyonce was there. Of the Clintons, all types of people were out there to uh, come and support Mr. Perry. So shout out to Mr. Perry for uh, being able to have this and just being so inspiring to people in the world. So shout out to you and congratulations. We here at Tyreek on the Move and Win Productions LLC, we are very proud of you and we're looking for that interview very soon. We're looking for that interview right there at Tyler Perry Studios. So we hope to see you soon. Now, it's time to get into some of those upcoming events. What are you looking forward to? What's on sale? What's ticket-wise? So now we have upcoming concerts that are right here, happening right here in Atlanta. Khalid, he's coming December 20th, and he'll and that concert will be at 7.30 at State Farm Arena. And then Ariana Grande, one of your people's favorites. Yes, November 19th. That'll be next month at 8 o'clock p.m. at State Farm Arena. And then Mariah Carey, she's doing a little Christmas concert. Concert November 22nd through November 30th at Caesars Palace in Las Vegas, Nevada. So, Meyer Carey fan, you gotta get out there and see her. Also, the Democratic debate, have you heard the news? They're coming here, Dece I mean, November 20th, and that location is to be determined. They're currently deciding where they will hold it. So, hopefully, we want media credentials there. So, the Democrats, go ahead and get those media credentials going for Tyreek on the Move TV. We want to be there. Also, Taste of Atlanta is happening October 18th through October 20th. So you're looking to get some good food, then you want to be at Old Fourth Word Park on October 18th for Taste of Atlanta. Now, next. It's Halloween season. Yes, it's spooky season. So, what are some of the things you can do to prepare for the holiday? You can go to Six Flags Fright Fest in Austell, Georgia, and the other Six Flags that are around the United States as well. Also, Netherworld, the haunted house. You know, lots of people don't get scared anymore on Halloween, but if you're looking to get scared, then you want to be at Netherworld, the haunted house. It's a great, great time to be there. Also, go see a scary movie at the movie theater. I'm pretty sure they got some scary movies playing out right now, so that'll help you get into the Halloween spirit. Now it's time for our special feature of the week. Did you know that the Atlanta Hawks, State Farm Arena, and Feeding Children Everywhere have partnered and come together to pack over one million meals for families in need right here in Metro Atlanta? Take a look at what went down. What's up everybody? We are here at State Farm Arena. As you can see, many people in the community have gathered and come together in a form of togetherness to give back to the community. They are packing one million meals for families in need. So this is a great opportunity to give back to the community, show support, and be able to give back to people in need. So that's what everyone's doing out here. There have also been some high profile figures to show up here today at State Farm Arena as well. Well.
so our organization is a global humanitarian organization that is committed to the vision of a hunger-free world starting right here in America. So one day State Farm and the Atlanta Hawks reached out to us because they really wanted to do something special in the Atlanta community. They really wanted to show, uh, you know, in this huge force of volunteers, right? Like something that they could do to make a difference in this community. But to do a million meals at one time would have only been possible with their help. to get a meal. We all need food. We need to build strong and healthy bodies. And in the city of Atlanta and throughout the state of Georgia and throughout America, there are people going to bed hungry every single night. That shouldn't be allowed in a country such as ours. We care about you, you're not alone, and um, anything we can do, we'll do it, help you. Um, again, we're, you're not alone, and don't feel like you're alone, and uh, there's always hope. really good event out there, you know, with one million meals for families. Tell me, what does it take to get such a great opportunity? Uh, definitely take the work of our community. Uh, the community definitely has a chip in the help. Uh, without them, we definitely wouldn't be able to reach that goal. So, it's our community coming together, knowing there's a problem and, uh, within and trying to fix that. Wow, talk about amazing and congratulations to the Atlanta Hawks State Farm Arena and feeding children everywhere for such a really amazing event and getting all of those volunteers out there to support. Congratulations because not only did you reach a million, but you also got over a million and that was just really great. And shout out to the Hawks media team, man, I tell you, so nice. So gracious. We are so grateful. We here at Win Productions and Tyreek on the Move, we are grateful to you all. You all treated us very nice and very welcoming media team, so we really appreciate that. And uh, we can't thank you enough. Now it's time to get into On the Grind, and we have two young gentlemen who are on the grind this week. The two owners of Passio. Yes, my cousin Darius Wynn and also his business partner Branford Rogers. They are on the grind out there in Charlottesville, Virginia. So we travel to Charlottesville, Virginia to sit down and interview the two exclusively. Take a look and make sure you support their business. What's up, everybody? We are here at Waynesboro, Virginia, and I'm sitting down with two awesome entrepreneurs, entrepreneurs of Passio. So please tell me, what, what do you guys do? So Passio is a digital ticket marketplace, um, mm -hmm. and we're catering towards high schools and youth organizations. Uh, we specialize in creating pre-event revenue so that schools can now have you know, money to go out and do things for concession stands and things like that. But on the back end as well, we're actually providing information so they can have a more safe environment for their event. Okay. So yeah, so tell, so tell me, like, how did you guys get this started? I mean, you guys have been doing this for quite a while and it's been successful, so how did y'all get this thing going? Yeah, the story about how we got started is actually pretty crazy. Um, I guess I was working on it in college, probably my first year of college. And then he came over to the house, and the first idea was actually to have um, tickets that you could scan for professional games. So if you had a hard ticket, you would be able to scan it and put it on your phone. That was the first idea. And then we, as we did more research, we kind of um, shifted and focused on more of a target market and kind of got our own niche with the high schools, and that's what we went with. Um, so we just kind of naturally started working together, I'd say, probably for the last three years. Yeah. Wow. So talk about some of like your success stories, because I know that y'all have been mm -hmm. traveling back and forth to, you know, different states within the United States. So tell me what was going on within that. Yeah, it's really just not giving up at the end of the day. Um, <laughs> you know, one thing led to another. And it's these small opportunities that you get. It, it might not seem like much, but we end up taking it and end up turning out to be something 
big for us. For instance, like you mentioned, us driving up to New Jersey all the time. We had an opportunity to be in the acceleration program, um, but it meant that every Sunday we had to drive up for class, and every Monday we were driving back. And we had sleeping to do at that. A friend's house. <laughs> sleeping, sleeping on the floor, sleeping in couches, you know, not eating that well. So it was, it was those little things that, you know, at the time might be frustrating, annoying, but it actually turned out to be something very beneficial for us. And uh, not too long ago, we found out that we were winners of the acceleration program that gave us a little bit of grant money. So things worked out. Yeah, because, you know, one of the main things about being an entrepreneur is you have to make ends meet no matter what the circumstances are. So I really applaud you all for that. You know, I want get to off, get off a little um, on a little rabbit trail here. So you did mention money. And I know that you guys are really big on stocks. Talk to the audience about how important that is. Uh, I think investing is super important. It's something I've been doing since I probably was 13 years old. Um, my father got me into it, and so I started at an early age. I would just invest weekly um, with kind of the money I made on my own. I've been selling tickets and doing side jobs since I was this big, so I've always earned my own money. And then now um, I, re I really stay with it because you need to have money to survive whether you like it or not. Um, so I think it's super important. You learn a lot, read a lot of books on um, stocks and money and things like that. So it's, it's something I'm passionate about. <laughs> You know, stock, stocks is a learning lesson. You know, sometimes you may be making a profit, then other times you may be losing. So <laughs> that is facts. Yeah, it happens. But um, so, talk about some some maybe like a downfall that y'all experienced. What what is this downfall, and how did y'all recover from it? I would actually probably say um, so. Like you said, right now we're raising money. When we first started this we went out and we tried to raise money early. And it's funny because the first person we sat down and talked to gave us money. So we left the meeting and we're like, oh, this, this is gonna be pretty easy. And then we talked to 99 other people and they all said no. <laughs> um, so, so it made us realize we had to, to bootstrap what we're doing. Um, and we, we've put a lot of our own money into it. We work and then we invest back into our business. Um, so yeah. Okay, cool. So tell me, you know, with like, it's, you know, nowadays when you, you go to these different people, how do you get people in the door? How do you, like, slide in there? What are some methods that you use to get convince people to go ahead and go through with the process? Yeah, well, <laughs> you know, that's a very long process, right? <laughs> so it's, it's more of showing them the body of work. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So when you start dealing with investors and trying to fundraise, it's really... You want to put that idea in the back of their mind months down the line before you have that big ask. So one of the things that me and Darius actually did uh, in the past, you know, was we went and tried to fundraise, right? We got a yes, we got a million no's. But now they know we're trying to do something. And every, ever since then, we've been keeping them up to date on our progress, where we're at, what we've won, the different events that we've done. And at the end of the day now, they see that we went from nothing to something, and now we're trying to get to our next goal. So now they've seen the body of work, so now they are investing in us more than just the company. And I would also add another gem in there, just, yeah. just ask. You'd be surprised at how many people will help you if you just simply ask them for help. Um, a lot of times you'll go to sit down and you'll be wanting to raise money and you, you are asking for money and they give you a piece of advice that's more more important than $10,000 or $25,000 because it's a long-term piece of advice that you'll be able to stick with with not only this business but other businesses and just life in general. So go ahead, let, let the audience know, tell the audience the social media, how can they find you, how can they get involved if maybe they want to go through with the business deal. Yeah, you can follow us on Instagram, it's Passio, at Passio, P-A-S-S-I-O-O. -O. You can also follow us on Twitter, at Passio, U-S, P-A-S-S-I-O-O, -O U-S, capitals. Um, and you can also follow us on Facebook, at Passio. You can go check out the website at www.passio.com. And if you just want to get in touch with one of us, you can shoot us an email at support at passio.com. Man, talk about some very established entrepreneurs out there in Charlottesville, Virginia. Yes, 
Passio, make sure you go support them, and they're looking for investors as well, so make sure you contact them and support them. Now it's time to get into some sports. What's trending in sports? Yes, once again, the Atlanta Hawks, they held an open practice out there at State Farm Arena, so I had a chance to catch up with some of the players, and also, the rookies, they had a talent show. Talk about stepping out of your comfort zone as a basketball player. Take a look at what went down at State Farm Arena. What's good, everybody? We are here at State Farm Arena for the Atlanta Hawks open practice. It's going to be big. It's going to be grand. And fans are going to get a taste of what the Atlanta Hawks are going to put out this upcoming season. So the preseason, this started yesterday on Monday. And now they are having an open practice right here at State Farm Arena. So fans are going to be able to come see some of their fa favorite players in action and just get a really good feel of what they can expect in the 2019-2020 season. So tell me, you know, we're at the Hawks open practice. So, I mean, what brings you out? So I've been coming to Hawks games since 2007, since I was a freshman at Georgia State University. Oh, I go to Georgia State. Excellent. <laughs> An incredible university and institutions, seventh biggest school in America. And um, we were, I was rushing a fraternity, so we had rush events here, coming at 18, getting down with these people walking from my bedroom, which was about three blocks away from here in downtown, at the Muses. And so this year I progressed to joining the Kia Six Man team and tryouts are going on this week. So it's important for me to come out 100% now that I have a little bit of time. And I'll be here again tomorrow for the... Oh, that sound, yeah, that sounds pretty impressive. So, I mean, you know, the Hawks, they just had their first preseason game. So what are you expecting out of the Atlanta Hawks this year? Um, I don't have a lot of expectations when it comes to Atlanta sports. Um, <laughs> being an Atlanta fan growing up, born and bred, it's, it's painful. So tell me, Mr. Trey, um, y'all had a pretty good practice out there. So tell me, how did this practice help you uh, prepare for the season? I think uh, we, we practiced really well, just had a lot of fun. I think uh, doing stuff, some of the same stuff we do every day is, is pretty good. Got you. All right. So tell me, what are some of the things that you're expecting to come out of this season? I mean, you know, you got a whole lot of games. You already had yeah. one preseason game. Yeah, I'm, I'm expecting some big things this year. I'm expecting us to, to do really well. I uh, got to continue to get better and, and focus on the little things and um, take it day by day. So uh, we're we got ready for, for it to really kick off. Got you. All right. Now, Coach did say you you all have a lot of rookies. So tell me about that. What are you what's going through your head about that? Yeah, we, yeah, we have a lot of rookies. We know that we're a young team. But uh, at the same time, we, we're not going to let that be an excuse of, mm -hmm. of the way we play. We have a lot of talent and now we've got to use it to the best of our abilities. Welcome back everybody to Tyreek on the Move. Now it's time for Tyreek's Money Tips, which means it's time to make, save, and manage that money. And this week's Money Tips is put money back 
into your business. Talk about something powerful. Yes, put money back into your business. So when you make that sale, don't go spending it on some new shoes or some new clothes or whatever, unless those new shoes or new clothes are company branded and they got your logo on it or something like that. But it's important to put money back into your business. And I'll give you a prime example, a local example of how you can put money back into your business. You can advertise right here on Tyreek on the Move. We are currently accepting advertisers for season four. So commercials, product placement, sponsorship, whatever the case may be, you can do that right here on my show, Tyreek on the Move. And that's just a perfect example of how you can put money back into your business. Hey everybody, I'm Tyreek Wynn, the host of the awesome show, Tyreek on the Move. And the Tyreek on the Move staff and I, we are calling all business owners out there to come and advertise on the show. We do commercials, we do product placement, we do it all. All we need is you, all the businesses out there, to come and advertise on the show. If you would like to advertise on the show, just send an email to winproductionsllc at gmail.com. Thank you all so much for watching Tyreek on the Move. And wait, I can't leave you without giving you your encouraging words. Today's encouraging words is Isaiah 43 1, and it reads as follows It says, Don't fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. So, no fear here is basically what that means. So, maybe you've been looking to start that business. Maybe you've been fearful of it. Oh, am I going to make a profit? Yes, you will, as long as you pray and meditate over it. All you have to do is just not fear and go ahead and take a leap of faith and do that. Maybe you've been looking, maybe you have to make a special uh, investment in something and maybe you don't think it's a good decision. You just have to pray about it and see if it is a good decision and go ahead and make that investment and don't fear about it. That's right, no fear here. And those are your encouraging words. Now, next week on Tyreek on the Move, the season finale is almost here. Yes, we will see that next week on Tyreek on the Move. We're closing out this season with the bang at the Tyreek on the Move Pinch Strikes Takeover. That was a great event. Thank you all so much for coming out and supporting me at that event. I really appreciate every single one of you for coming out. We had a great time. Uh, I scored the highest. I bowled 300, as some of you know. Yeah, I didn't bowl 300. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, so we had that. Also, Tyreek on the Move's first red carpet movie premiere for Along Came the Devil 2. You will also see that next week. And I have to give a special shout out because... After the movie premiere, we went out to the Red Robin in Cumming, Georgia, and we sat down with server Mr. Frank, and he was a great server. He came and he dropped like six strawberry lemonades at my table because, yes, I crave some strawberry lemonade. For those of you who don't know, I was chugging them down. Yes, and they got some really good delicious burgers out there as well. So make sure he is there on Fridays and Sundays. So make sure you all, if you're out in the coming area and you want to eat, go to Red Robin Friday and Sunday to go visit Mr. Frank. Request him and sit at his table. Thank you all so much for watching this great episode of Tyreek on the Move, and I'll see you next week.